Hey everybody, welcome to another Kingdom Death Monster video on the Mandalik. I'm John as always. This is probably going up on a Monday. We're not going to call this Kingdom Death Monster Monday because I don't know when the next video will be because the next video is probably going to be gameplay and I have to do a lot of figuring out of setting up cameras and stuff for that, but hopefully it won't take too, too long. But today we're going to build. Uh, as I said during the unboxing, there's a whole lot of sprues in that box, but you need just this one single sprue for the first many 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 hours of uh kingdom death monstering you've got your four starting survivors on here because you'll need four miniatures to represent your four characters that you're playing as we've got the white lion you can see the big halves of the body there and we actually have the butcher here's his torso down here uh who you'll face uh four years in maybe five years into the campaign um so with this one sprue you can play a ludicrous amount just before we get into chopping that up and putting it together, I want to go over a little bit of my tools here. I've got a pair of nippers. These are super cheap. I paid like 10 bucks for them. There are pairs that cost over $100 that you could buy. I don't know why you would. These are just for snipping off the pieces to make sure uh, that we can get access to them. I've got some tweezers here of various shapes and sizes. These are to hold little tiny pieces. You want to be deeply careful using tweezers on little plastic pieces because if you squeeze too hard they will rocket across the room and because you're usually holding tiny pieces with the tweezers you'll never find that piece ever again i've got a set of files these are uh, i believe diamond files uh so that you can uh, kind of sand stuff down you could also use sandpaper uh, this is just for making sure that edges that you need to glue are smooth or the right size etc and speaking of that i've got an exacto knife or a hobby knife if you don't want to have the exacto brand this is to uh, cut off bits of the plastic because when we cut it we're going to try to get it as flush as possible so that we don't have like this little uh, nubbin here so there might be a little bit of plastic left over there uh, we'll want to make sure to shave that off flat so that when we paint it there's not a weird ugly mark um, but yeah we're going to start out and we'll start out with this fella right here who has, uh, I believe, only three pieces to put together. Let's get the focus on. It's definitely wanting to focus on that pattern in the background. There we go. Uh, so this guy requires three pieces. Most miniatures that you'll build of your survivors after these four, you're going to be choosing individual heads and individual arms and individual legs. The first four are mostly built. This guy's basically missing a leg and an arm. So we're going to snip those out and uh, get to gluing. Okay, so we've got his three pieces. We've got his torso, his arm holding the founding stone, and we've also got his leg. There's a few things that you definitely want to do first. You want to dry fit these pieces you want to attach them and see how they attach so that you know what you're doing when you get around to gluing them. How does this one attach? That's a very good question. That's why we do this. Is this even his arm? This is his arm. It must be his arm. Update, it is his arm. And this is a very good example of why we have the X-Acto knife. So you'll notice there's this little bit hanging off of there. That's a bit of the plastic that got left over. And that's why we have the exacto knife. So that we can just give that a little cut and a little cut. Plastic is relatively soft. You can cut like that. You can also go backwards to uh, shave bits off to make it flatter and smoother. Luckily, this is going to be a glued bit, so it's not that vital that it be uh, overly pretty. Now, if we try to put the hole in the peg, boy, doing this while trying to keep it on camera is also a little bit tricky, eh? We can see that it would go in like that. Uh, there is a little bit of a gap there, which you could fill in, uh, or we can always take a look to see if we can... Um, slice this down just a little bit more to try to make this a little bit less gapless and i think we could i think the edge of uh, where we cut there has a little bit of marking on it so we can probably shave that down that might make it fit just a little bit better Mm 
maybe just a little bit more flushly. Let's let's check this out. Okay, so it doesn't appear that we're going to get perfectly gapless um, on this. We might get to close this gap just a little bit more uh, when we glue it. You'll see why. Um, but there's also ways of filling that before you paint it, uh, which are super duper easy. So we'll deconnect that because we haven't glued it yet. We're just making sure we know where the pieces go. And then because I'm probably just going to glue this guy all together at once, we can uh, figure out where his leg goes. Okay, so his leg just kind of goes in here, and again, it looks like there might be a bit of a gap. Um, so we might have to do some gap filling on uh, on this fella here. So this is the last tool that I haven't talked about that you'll need for building miniatures with this. This is uh, Tamiya Extra Thin. Come on, focus. What are you trying to focus on, camera? There we go. This is Tamiya Extra Thin uh, Plastic Cement. It's not technically a glue. It doesn't glue things by being sticky and making two things stick together. This actually chemically changes the plastic. It actually melts the plastic a little bit uh, so that when you put two pieces of plastic together, you end up with uh, ooey gooey, almost like grilled cheese between the two pieces of plastic. It resets relatively quickly and you basically have chemically Physically speaking, one piece of plastic works great on these, uh, requires a very little tiny bit, and it's relatively quick to uh, set. So what we're going to do, and uh, we'll see how well this works on camera, because I got to do this quick, of course, is we will brush on a little bit on the surface where we want it to go, which is going to be that little nub and as well as his sort of arm socket. And then we're going to put a bit. Also, you want to use this in a well-ventilated room. I've got a few fans going that you can't hear due to the loveliness that is RTX noise cancellation. So we put a little bit of this plastic cement on both sides. And we're going to push this into place. And we're going to hold it. You can see on the back it wasn't quite where we wanted it to be. So we can press it in some more. And that looks to be about as good as we're going to get for filling that gap, unfortunately. So before I paint that, I will want to fill that gap in. There's a few ways you can do that. You can actually melt just like extra pieces of this plastic in the uh, cement to get something called sprue glue or sprue goo and fill it in that way. There's also um, various putties and epoxies that you could fill in as well. But that's going to set. It's only going to take a, a very short period of time to set. And it's relative, it's strongish enough. I found that like I can set this down and it's not going to fall out or anything. And that means that we can actually start on the leg as well here. Cause the leg, um, the leg doesn't have as nice of a, a connection. There's no obvious, uh, like peg like there was, there's just kind of a cut out where the leg sits. So having the glue on it is going to really, uh, up our ability to kind of get this into where we want it to be. And actually, before I do that, I will take a quick look to see if there's any uh, stuff I want to cut off. So there's a bit of plastic on the foot there. Obviously not going to matter too much because we're going to glue this foot to a base. But we can just make that just a little bit flatter by getting that excess plastic off. We can check on him as well. Um, there's not too much in the way of lines that were left over. Again, a little bit on the foot there. Not that big of a deal since we're gluing him to... A thing. There's a little bit on the bottom of, a, of the lantern as well. Uh, but again, that's going to be on the bottom and we can shave that off before we paint. Um, but yeah, so here's his arm. And actually, I'll bet you it's strong enough for us to hold that arm and it's not going to go anywhere. You could still probably pull it off. But at this point, if you try to pull it off, like I said, you're going to end up with that grilled cheese effect of stringy plastic between the two. And you don't want that. But let's get the leg on. So we'll do a bit of glue on the leg. And we'll do a bit of glue on where the leg is going to go. And then we will try to get this into where it needs to go. And even though the glue does set fast, you do have a bit of time to work on it. So there we go. We've got the leg in. This is actually a good place 
for a pair of tweezers just to push a little bit because at least how I'm doing it, I wasn't able to get in there. So we can use this to kind of visualize where we're looking to push this leg into. So it's in, it is pretty stuck. As you saw, there was no mechanical uh, joints or anything, and that is now in there. Again, you can see, especially when we get up really close, that there is a little bit of a gap on that knee joint. Um, honestly, looking at this even relatively close, let alone at like table level, you can't really see it. So we'll see if I need to fill that in or not. Uh, and that's him done, other than being put on a base. But I'll grab those bases in just a little bit. So we can set him very safely aside, making sure that we're not putting any weight or pressure on the bits that we glued so that they can set where we want. And actually, I'm going to set him in a safer place. Be right back. And that will let us move on to the next mini. We'll move on to the uh, second male survivor here, who's this guy who doesn't even have a face. So we started off with a very simple one, just an arm and a leg. This one, he doesn't even have his face yet. We have to glue that in. This one looks like we're going to have one, two, three, four, five, six pieces for this one. So we're already getting a little bit more complicated. Um, but let's snip out those pieces. Okay, so snipped out, we have the large torso part of this fella. We've got his uh, one of his legs here. We have what appears to be a piece of cloth. We have another piece of cloth. And we have his hand holding his founding stone shard. So this one's obviously going to take a little bit more work to make sure that we get all the pieces in the right spot. Uh, and obviously one of the easiest ones is going to be the face because the face has one of those handy little peg holes in it with a peg on it. As a quick note, when you are cutting off pieces, make sure that you know that you're cutting off uh, not the pegs. So for example, uh, sometimes these little pegs are actually connected to the sprue and you need to cut before the peg. So you do want to keep an eye on that. So let's shove his face in and see how it fits. There's quite a bit of a gap up there and you can see there's some excess plastic on top of the face. So we're gonna to wanna to shave that off, which should give us a better fit. All right, so I've shaved his face off. I've also flipped the mat because I bet that's causing a bit of my autofocus issues. So now if we push the face in now, you can see there's still a bit of a gap up there. Uh, but again, probably not going to be able to get perfectly rid of that. And that's something that we can fill in with paint afterwards, or not with paint, but with uh, some filler. Uh, it might not even show up that badly when painted. Uh, plus, since the glue melts a little bit, we may even be able to close some more of that gap. So let's get the face in now so it has time to set. So a bit of glue in the face hole and the flat surfaces around the face hole because we're going to want that to melt a little bit. And then plastic on the back side of the face and the upside of the face. Let's push that in. And then let's push it up and see if we can close a little bit more of that gap just due to the, the melting of the plastic. And not terribly, but again, um, you'll always see gaps and stuff and imperfections the much closer you are. You got to remember that you're really going to be seeing these minis at about this size. And hey, they're out of focus anyway, so you can't even tell. <laughs> All right, but that's the face in. That'll set in just a little bit. And now we have to figure out where the other things go, as well as uh, clean up some of these lines. Uh, so again, there's a bit of plastic on there. That'll probably cause some issues. So we'll just want to shave that off a bit. You can see there's a big amount of plastic right here. You're going to want to get rid of that. 
Uh, as well, the plastic cement won't make you stick to things, which is good, but it will dry the ever-living hell out of your hands. So just be aware of that. Maybe keep some moisturizer on hand or something. The hand holding the founding stone is another tricky one because there's not really any pegs or anything. Um, there is just sort of a flat edge. You can see the groove there a little bit where it just becomes really flat and featureless. And that just sort of sits at his wrist. And one of the nice things is when you find the right part, you typically see the seam disappear. Maybe not on camera this close, but you can see the seam disappear and uh, you can kind of tell you're in the right spot. So we'll glue this on because uh, this one's going to take a little bit of work too. And again, the nice thing is you saw me just touch it and it's now begun to stuck, but is in no way, shape or form set. We actually still could take it basically off again, uh, but only do that in an absolute emergency. And actually, there we go. So as far as I can tell, I can't even see a seam really there anymore, or at least it, you know, the, the seam that you can sort of see is just the palm of his hand, right? It just kind of makes sense. On the other side, we can see a little bit of a seam there. So we can try to push that down just a little bit. Just make sure that you're always pushing in the right direction so that you're not just going to send the piece flying off. So I know there's a little bit of a lip up here where his wrist is. So I can kind of push against that lip a little bit without sending the piece absolutely flying. I also flipped the playmat back over because it was having different focus issues uh, being on the base green side. So there we go. We have the face and the stone. So I was just shaving off a bit of plastic from uh, the leg here. And some people might wonder if I'm being careful with this knife or not. And I am. The plastic is very soft, so the knife's going to go through pretty quickly. And the one thing that you want to do is you want to have perfect control of your knife. Uh, don't be afraid of knives. Just make sure that you have control of your knife. So I'm going to go like in a little bit, and I'm always going to end my cut coming up. So if I did follow through, I would not be going towards my hand like that. I would be going up, cut up. Okay, so up next we have his, uh, what's this, left leg, I suppose, left leg. Uh, and it actually goes in just quite nicely. There is a spot here on the back uh, that's obviously cut out for his leg. And the leg just slides right on in. There we go. Right on in. Again, when it goes in, the seam, the feel, everything just kind of all fits into place at once. You can see a lot of that seam. You can see a lot of that seam disappears. All right, so we'll glue that in. So in we go. There's the good feel and the seams disappearing more or less, actually. Even on camera, that looks like the seam has mostly disappeared. You can see a little bit against the cloak, but that makes sense. Your leg would not necessarily be perfectly against your loincloth, now would it? So there we go. There's the leg in. All right, after a boatload of finagling, like literal fives of minutes, I have discovered that these cloth pieces have almost no like indication of really where they go. This one just kind of fits vaguely in here like this. There's barely a surface to tell you where it's supposed to go. But there we go. That's about as seamless as it gets. That feels like that's pretty much where it's supposed to go. Going to be a little bit easier when we get the glue on it. Thank you. 
So we pop it on. Those two melted pieces of plastic will instantly give us some uh, some connection. And if we finagle around, actually, yeah, that looks quite good where it is right there. Again, a little bit of a seam when you're looking ludicrously close, but at table level, it's not really going to be noticed. This seam on the front looks a little bit ugly, but luckily this last piece of cloth actually kind of sits over that whole area and draws any attention away from it. This one also has very little in the way of actual obvious spot that it goes, but it just kind of comes down like a towel uh, from there, giving a little bit of flow to the model. All right, so I think I've got it where I want it. I want it to kind of sit like that. So we're going to pop that off. We're going to add some glue to the flat surface where it's going to touch and down just a little bit more because I think it's going to touch on all those spots. And it's going to kind of be in this flattish area here. Again, you can usually tell where the glue is supposed to go because there's going to be basically no surface detail in order to give you that good connection. So we'll pop this on, get that glue connection started so that then we can finagle it around just a little bit. So if we pop it in like that, give it a little bit more of a squeeze to make sure the melted plastic's intermingling. I'm actually going to come back to this cloth piece and rotate it just a tiny bit. Again, you can do that. You've got just a little bit of time in which you can sort of modify just a little bit how the pieces are connected. So there we go. We got another completed mini. Again, some little bits and pieces that I'm probably going to want to shave off before I uh, get around to painting this, but that is a ways off. All right, two male survivors done. We're going to move on to one of the female survivors here. We'll start with uh, this one here, which is just a torso, like an upper torso. Uh, looks like she is one, two, three, four, five, about six pieces. So let's get her out and get her together. This one's actually a good example. You see the sprue goes really deep into this piece and can actually be a bit tricky to get it to. So what you can do is you can just snap or clip rather really shallowly. Still have a big old chunk of sprue there and then get in and make a second cut. Your first cut does not have to be the only cut that you do. There we go. And we'll clean that up for sure. All right. So she looks a little bit more simple to connect because she is just basically two arms and two legs, as well as a piece of cloth. So we've got a piece of arm that we can dry fit in. Looks like it goes about like that, holding her lantern out. So we'll get to gluing that in. And there again is a really nice uh, seam clearing on her when you get the arm in properly. Uh, when you get the arm in back there, the seam becomes almost non-existent. All right, her right arm is uh, just a flat piece here, which is just going to go right on there like so. Again, pretty obvious. And again, the seam sort of disappears when you get it in the right spot. So we'll get that arm on and then we'll figure out where her legs are going to go. There we go. Again, the seam sort of disappeared or became much less obvious. And there she is holding her lantern with, uh, with her founding stone. And there you go. I dropped it and everything is still in place. That's how quickly the glue starts to uh, take a hold, even if it's not perfectly set just yet. So her legs actually go together as sort of a, a bottom half here. The, the one leg just sort of goes in, 
to give her sort of a a slightly sneaking uh, around build. So we can glue that in and that should set and that'll give us a, a bottom half to go to the top half of the model. And there we go. There's the bottom half. And then obviously that lets us connect the, uh, the top half to the bottom half pretty easily right at the waist. So it goes in just like that. It gives her sort of a crouched over sneaking perspective or, or position, I suppose. All right, so there she is, top and bottom put together. Uh, notably, a weird looking butt on the back, but that's because we've got the cloth piece that's gonna fit into that cutout to kind of cover stuff up just a little bit. So cloth piece is gonna go in there. So we will uh, glue that up. And that's gonna be her done. I had a minor catastrophic failure as the top and bottom became detached. Uh, it looks as if I just didn't put enough glue on some of the spots. It was as if there was no connection whatsoever. There was no grilled cheese or nothing. I found it's actually pretty hard to overdo this uh, plastic cement. I don't know if that's true or not. Maybe I'm doing catastrophic damage to the models or something. Maybe when I go to paint them, it's going to be blatantly obvious but I've not found it uh, a thing to overdo the glue. And so in this example, or in this case, for example, I don't feel a connection up there. So I'm gonna to wanna to add some more glue on kind of the top line of that cloth up here, maybe even flood it just a little bit. And then same thing on this piece flood that top line. Reattach. That feels more like an actual connection between the plastics. Give it a little bit of a press. Seal that up just a little bit and uh, she should be good to go and take a sit to uh to finish setting all right so that just leaves our final prologue survivor here uh, our second female survivor she only has five pieces total just two arms two legs and body so let's get her snipped out and then i think we might call it for this video i was going to do the white line in this video too but honestly i think this one might be a little bit long and so just for uh shortness sake and discoverability sake i'll do the white lion as another build video um, probably sometime this week. Okay, so she has a little bit of uh, tied loincloth that goes down the center here. There's a little hole uh, with a peg for it, but it's not quite fitting. I'm not sure if there's extra plastic or what, but again, through the magic of melted plastic, we should be able to make it work out. I can see the seams of how it's supposed to go together. So like that, so it's kind of a knotted loincloth coming down. And yeah, with a bit of glue, that was uh, a lot easier. I keep saying glue, I of course mean cement. And there we go. So there's a bit of uh, action to the loincloth now. So now she needs a leg, which we happen to have right here. The leg, there is a hole, but uh, nothing actually goes in there. But there is a nice little uh, sort of perfect fit when you get it in on that right side. So we'll glue in that leg. I think that hole is just a leftover from the, the manufacturing process, not actually meant to be any sort of real connection. So if we just line that up, and 
we get that good fit. Good connection. So that should set. So now we just have to do the arms. So the right arm has a, uh, a nice fit. Very clear uh, shoulder joint that kind of goes in there. So we can glue that in. Oh, that's a bit of a tenuous connection. I might want to uh, let that sit just a little bit without doing anything further. There we go. I actually did the cardinal sin. I just ripped the arm right out. Uh, there was a bit of melty plastic. Um, but after melting it some more, now it's actually quite a bit more seamless. So there we go. That just leaves one more arm. The final arm is actually a little bit tricky. Uh, as you can see, there's not really a socket for her arm at all. Uh, there is, however, a little bit of a step cut out. And it lines up just a little bit in her hair there. So I see how it lines up. We're going to stick it in. Not sure how well I'll be able to get this on camera. Uh, if I wasn't filming this, I would be breaking out my lighted magnifying glass. But I already have a camera and a microphone in front of my face. So I don't really have space for anything else here. As well, in the comments down below, if you could let me know if you like the video, if it's helpful because you're building the models, if it's interesting or relaxing, if you're just watching it for the heck of it, let me know. Let me know, because it's a little bit more challenging than I expected to film this. And obviously there's a lot more models to build. So I'd like to know if it's worth it. Okay, that feels like we got a good connection. There we go. So there is another completed model. She's got her founding stone in front of her. She's got her lantern. And we can let her go and set a little bit. And we can uh, start putting these on bases. All right, we've got some bases. We actually have these cool uh, stone face bases. The game comes with uh, some number of these. There's some plastic on there that we want to get off ourselves. Um, not many of these. I think they only give you eight or so. Um, but they're really cool because this is the, the surface of Kingdom Death Monster. The entire surface of basically the world are these stone faces. Um, they also give you these 30 millimeter bases. They, of course, say, I love Poots Gaming. Again, if it would focus. So what on earth? There we go. There we go. We got the I love Poots weird eagle monster thing. Uh, they are 30 millimeter bases, as you can see. So we're just going to glue the bases in and then we can glue a mini to a base. So let's start with this one. Let's just go around the outside here. Uh, they include a lot of other bases, but they're just sort of a, a, a rough sandpaper like texture without any actual definition, which is good if you want to base it yourself. If you're going to add some rocks or grass or whatever basing material you have. Let's pop that in there. So that should give us a good connection. Um, but there are Etsy stores that sell these. There's STL files if you have a resin printer yourself. I have tried to FDM print these, uh, and an FDM printer just doesn't have the, uh, uh, the resolution that I'm looking for to make it really, really, really good. We've got all the bases glued together. So now we're going to go back to our first mini that we built. This guy, remember him, and we're going to glue him to the base. Now. I'm not actually going to glue the base because, again, this melts plastic. And so I don't want to uh, accidentally glue part of the base that's not where he's going to stand and then end up with a bit of a, a melty face. It's not like it's just instantaneous. It doesn't become a puddle of glue, um, but you might lose some definition um, even if you don't touch it afterwards. So what I'm going to do is what I'm going to do is I'm going to flood his feet with glue or cement so that Hopefully that just transfers onto the base. And we need to find a good spot for him. Feels like a decent spot. So I will just push down 
on his one foot that is most flat on the ground. And then here's where the brush can actually come in handy. You see there's a crevice down there. I'm gonna wash off most of the glue. I can actually shove that brush in. I guess you can't see this. I can actually shove that brush into the crevices to try to make sure that we're getting a connection where I want the connection to be. And again, I'll push down on that foot a bit more. You can see it's already holding. It's a bit tenuous. It's a bit tenuous. Although I do like if you can actually see it. I'm not sure if it'll focus or not enough. There is a nose going right into the arch of his foot. It actually looks like a kind of exactly where he would be stepping. I'm going to push a little bit on this foot too because there's a little bit more spaces that are getting touched by the glue. And I'm going to let that go sit and see if it cures enough uh, to just kind of hold. I think it will. I'll put that uh, aside for safekeeping. Obviously, on the flat bases, it's a fair bit easier because it's just a flat base. Um, but these bases look really cool. And since the starting survivors are the ones that I'm going to use the most, I want them to have the coolest base. Uh, so let's go with our second model here that we built. Uh, again, he's got uh, one foot that's not quite as flat as the other, but I think it'll work. So let's flood his feet with cement. And let's get him on. I actually lucked out and I felt an almost perfect spot. Let's see if we can do that again. Not quite, eh? That might be decent. Oops, tipping over. Uh, so I'm trying to very tenuously connect him to that forehead and this foot here. Ooh, that feels a little bit better. So now I'll do the same thing. Let me just make sure that this looks Yeah, that looks pretty good. Um, so I'll do the same thing. I'm going to use the brush to get into that crevice just a little bit. And I'm going to push down on his feet just a little bit to make sure they're connecting with those faces, make sure the glue is melting or the cement is melting, the plastic's melting and connecting. Again, relatively tenuous connection with the stone faces, but I'm thinking that if we set him aside like this, we should be pretty good. That brings us to uh, the first female survivor that we built. I worry about her. She has relatively tiny feet and is mostly tiptoeing. We feel around. Actually, 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 this spot here works pretty well. If we get her foot in on that face and her toes back there. So I'm going to put that down, hopefully being able to identify where I wanted that to go. And again, we'll flood her feet with glue. We'll try to pick this base up in the exact same way I was holding it. And I think it was a foot there. Yep. It was a foot right there. So her front foot is making pretty good connection with a face, a couple of faces actually. The back foot, a little bit more tenuous. All right, so we'll hold that in place. Uh, this is something you sometimes have to do with the cement. It does set relatively quick, but sometimes you just got to sit, hold it, and let it actually get that good set. And that, I think, will be good enough for us to set her aside. Typically, the smaller the connection points, the less uh, strong the connection is going to be. But once it sets, it's very set. 
That brings us to the last model. Um, she has pretty decent steps as well. Relatively flat feet on uh, the front foot at least. Uh, so let's get glue on the feet. And connect her to the base. Push down on the feet. Make sure they're making a good connection. Or not. <laughs> not at all. All right. She ended up being quite a bit more challenging than I thought. Um, but I think, and she's still tilting backwards. I think if we hold her forward and now just let her sit, she'll be good. And so we have our four starting survivors completed. That means all we need is a white lion. Uh, and we can get playing, and then of course at some point in the future I will uh, look to paint these. Uh, as I said, let me know in the comments down below if you liked watching this, if it was helpful, if you were yourself are building, uh, or if you just enjoyed it watching vicariously. Um, it was a little bit trickier than I thought to film these, probably going to be a lot longer of a video than I ever expected, which is why the white lion is going to hold off for the next video. Um, but yeah, let me know anything you want to know. Hopefully gameplay content will be coming soon, uh, but at least very shortly will be the White Lion build. Uh, yeah, as always, see y'all next time.